Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bada Yaso Dhananda Prashachana Dhananda Yamunachira Hagavate Basu de Paiha Om Namo Hagavate Basu de Paiha Om Namo Hagavate Basu de Paiha Naranam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Chaya Mudhiraya Nasta Prayeshu Papadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki So tomorrow is the auspicious because tomorrow is Dwadesi so we have to break the fast for the Akadesi so we cannot fast on the Dwadasi. So we want to speak about the appearance of Lord Vamanadev this evening. So Lord Vishnu appears in many different species of life. He comes in, in the aquatics as Matsya. Aquatics. Aquatics, yeah. And he comes in for animals in the form of Lord Varaha. Varaha. And he comes among the human beings as Lord Krishna and Lord Rama. 
And he comes among the demigods as Lord Vamanadev. So Lord Vamanadev was born as the son of Aditi and Kashya. So it happened that the demigods in, headed by Indra, Indra is the king of the demigods, he had offended their guru, Brihaspati. And so Brihaspati saw Indra was proud and offensive, so he left the assembly and he disappeared. He wouldn't allow the demigods to find him. So when Brihaspati left the demigods, then the demigods lost their power. And when the de demons came to fight them, they defeated them. The demons had been very faithful to their guru, Sukra Acharya, and they followed all of his instructions, so they became very powerful. Power, spiritual power. The demigods actually killed Bali Maharaj. But Sukracharya was so powerful that he could bring him back to life. So you could imagine if you if you're killed and your guru brings you back to life, you have a lot of faith in your guru. So Bali Maharaj had a lot of faith in his guru Sukracharya. I followed all of his instructions. One of the instructions which he'd had from Sukracharya was that he should give charity to the brahmanas. We see several demons who did this. There were people like in Krishna Lila, Jarasandha also would give charity to brahmanas. So, Bali Maharaj was leading the demons and they went, Sukracharya told them that the demigods have lost their guru, you'll be able to defeat them easily now. So the demons went and attacked the demigods and defeated them. So the demigods, they're all actually sons of Diti. Aditi, sorry, Aditi. Right? And what happened when the demigods were defeated, then they, they went into hiding. Because the demigods, the demons had defeated them, they took over the heavenly planets. And they, they went into hiding. But when they were away in hiding, then their mother, Aditi, was missing them very much. She was thinking about my children, where are they, I want to see my sons. Yeah, I want to see my sons. So she approached her husband and she begged her husband Kashyapa. And the result was that Aditi gave birth to a child who was actually an incarnation of God. Uh, 
he was a very special child. He was in the form of a dwarf brahmana. And he was very attractive. So when Bali Ma when when of course this child who is the dwarf brahmana, this is Lord Vamanati. And he came as one of the children of Aditi and Kashyapa. And so he wants to help the demigods get back the heavenly planets. Whenever there's trouble from the demons, then the demigods need help and often the Lord has to come and help them. So it happened Lord Vamana Dev came in the form of the dwarf Brahmana and he went to see Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was occupying Indra's position. He was ruling the heavenly planet. So Lord Vamana Dev came before before uh, before Bali Maharaj and he could Bali Maharaj could see that he is a Brahmana and he understood he must want some charity. So uh, Bali Maharaj requested Lord Vamana Dev, what would you like my dear Brahmana, what can I give you? Uh, and Lord Vamana Dev said, I, I would like three steps of land. But Bali Maharaj said, what? Only three steps of land? You know, I couldn't give you, I can give you a kiss. I can give you wealth. Why you only want three steps? If I uh, I'm not, if a person is not satisfied with three steps of land, he won't be satisfied with three planets. I just simply asking you, just please give me three steps of land. But Beside Bali Maharaj was Bali Maharaj's guru, Sukracharya. And Sukracharya could understand that this Brahmana is not an ordinary Brahmana boy. And Sukracharya told Bali Maharaj, don't give this ma this Brahmana boy any charity. I think he's the Supreme Lord. He could be the Supreme Lord himself and he's come to cheat you. So Sukracharya was a guru and he's telling Bali Maharaj, don't give him any charity. So Bali Maharaj So Bali Maharaj was thinking that if I give charity then I'm disobeying my guru. But previously my guru had told me to give charity to brahmanas. And now he's saying, don't give him charity. So why is he changing? He's changing his instructions. And Bali Maharaj also thought that 
if he is the Lord and I don't give charity, then he can take it from me anyway. But if I give charity to him and he is the Lord, then, you know, I get the credit of giving him. But if I don't give him, he'll take everything anyway. So it's better I give him. Because if he's going to take it, if he takes it by force, that's not very good. It won't give me a name. But if I give in charity, I'll get the credit of having given charity to him. But the, the Guru Shukracharya is a problem because Shukracharya is saying, don't give him. Because if you get, he'll take everything away, you'll have nothing left. Try to understand, this Sukracharya was more interested, he didn't want his disciple to lose all his wealth. He liked the idea that his disciple has a lot of wealth. Yeah, if the disciple has a lot of wealth then he can maintain the guru, right? If the disciples poor, then how will we take how will we take care of the guru? So Shukracharya was worried, maybe my disciple will lose everything. That will be very bad for me. So he's telling, don't give him any charity. But Bali Maharaj thought, well he told me before, I should give to the brahmanas. Mm -hmm. And if he is the Lord, he will take it anyway. So better I will give him. So Bali Maharaj decided to give charity. And of course, when he, he, he used his lota and he poured water into the hands of Lord Vamanadev, indicating that he agreed to give. And then Lord Vamanadev immediately assumed a gigantic form. And with one step, he covered half the universe. And with the other, the second step, he covered the other half of the universe. It is said, when he extended his foot, it went right to the covering of the universe and made a hole in the covering of the universe. And at that time the water from the Kajio Ocean came into the universe. And that water flows down through the universe in the form of the Ganga. And that water has great power because it washed the feet of Lord Vamanade. When he extended his foot, his toes covered, pierced the covering, so his feet washed the his feet were washed by all that water. So 
So that's why Ganga water is so powerful. And that's why Lord Shiva also holds the water on his hand. It's the bath water, it's the Abhishek of Lord Ramanandi. So, Lord Vamanadev then spoke to Bali Maharaj that he said, You promised me three steps of land. Where am I supposed to take the third step? You have cheated me, you have lied to me. You promised me three steps of land. And at that time, Lord Vamanadev, he had Bali Maharaj tied up with the ropes of Varuna. And different people all came to try to appeal to Lord Vamanadev to be merciful to Bali Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj came there. And all of his family were there, his wife and his daughter, and they were all there and they saw their father taken a prisoner. One minute he had been the king of heaven and he was so powerful, he was controlling the universe. But the next minute he was a prisoner. He lost everything. So Lord Vamanadev said, You cheated me, you promised me three steps. Where should I take the third step? So then Bali Maharaj said, You can take the third step on my head. Because although you've taken the universe, you have not taken me. So you can take the third step on my head. So in this way, Lord Vamanadev took Bali Maharaj down to the lower planets, the planets in the lower region of the universe. Actually, Sukracharya, the guru of Bali Maharaj, he had cursed Bali Maharaj he said, if you give charity, I curse you that you will go to hell. So when Lord Vamanadev was given the third step on the head of Bali Maharaj, he put Bali Maharaj into the lower region of the universe. But that region is the subterranean heavenly planets. Subterranean. Yeah, subterranean. <laughs> How to translate that, I don't know. But anyway, that, that, the, although it's a hellish planet, it's very opulent. There's no sunlight. Everything is lit by the light of jewels. Because it's in the lower region of the universe, they don't get the light of the sun. So this is where the demons are supposed to reside. Right, the demigods they live up in Swarga Loka in the heavenly planets. And the demons they reside in the lower region of the universe. 
But sometimes the demons come and attack the demigods and take over the heavenly planet. And at that time, the Lord has to come and help the demigods. So Vamanadev, he put Bali Maharaj in back into the lower region of the universe. And he, the Lord Vamanadev told him, said, don't worry, I'm also coming there with you and I will be your doorkeeper. So it is said, Lord Vamanadev resides there in the Sutala Loka, one of the lower reach, one of the planets in the lower region of the universe. And Lord Vamanadev is there as his doorkeeper. Nobody can disturb Bali Maharaj. Because Lord Vamanadev is there to protect him. So this example of Bali Maharaj is very important for us because it shows how his devotional service, two forms of devotional service are very, very difficult and very rare. One is becoming the friend of the Lord and the other is to surrender everything. And we see the wonderful quality in Bali Maharaj, how he was so determined to keep his honesty. Honesty is a very important quality for the devotee. Right? It said, Maharaj Yudhisthira never told a lie. And said that in his chariot did not touch the ground because he was so honest. His chariot floated off the ground. And when Lord Krishna asked him to lie, he want, Lord Krishna wanted him to tell Dronacharya, Ashwatthama is dead. Yudhisthira, he said, no, no, I can't tell a lie like that, no. Mm. Of course, they, they, they did a trick so that they said, Ashwatthama, the elephant, is dead. Uh, yeah. Ashwatthama is also the name of an elephant, so they killed the elephant. Uh, and so in this way they could kill Dronacharya. Uh, so they could go on and kill Dronacharya. When Dronacharya heard his son was dead, uh, then he didn't want to fight anymore. So he took he took samadhi when he was in samadhi they killed. Mm. So anyway, Maharaj Yudhisthira never told a lie. Mm. Maharaj Dasara, the father of Lord Ramachandra, he was also famous. He did not lie. He had promised Kaikei two boons and when Kaikei wanted to send Lord Rama to the forest, he didn't want to keep his promise. But she said, no, you have to keep your promise. You always keep your promise. He, he had famous words, he said, Better I die than tell a lie. Right? So 
something like that. So, very famous, you know, surrendered everything to Krishna. Very difficult thing to do. Another person who also surrendered everything was Queen Rukmini. Rukmini was ready to give up everything for the service of Lord Krishna. Of course, Rukmini is not an ordinary lady, she is the goddess of fortune. But she's ready to give everything for Krishna. So, in the same way, Bali Maharaj surrendered everything for Lord Vamanate. So, tomorrow is the day we are remembering how Lord Vamanate appeared at noon and he appeared in this place where Bali Maharaj was performing yagya. And Bali Maharaj is such a great devotee that he could give up everything. After having everything, he'd achieved everything, he'd got the whole heavenly planets and all the demigods under him. He was so powerful, but he lost, he gave up everything. So although he was born in the demon family, he was born in the family of the demons like Prahlad, but still he was a great devotee. So we see examples like this, how birth is not an obstacle, does not have to be an obstacle to being a devotee. Bali Maharaj had and although he was with the demons and fighting with the demons, but when Lord Vamana, when Lord, when the Lord came as Vamana Dev, he gave up everything for him. So very instructive pastime for all of us. Any question? Yes? The mother is that you sometimes is necessary to life because when she comes here for the yashwa, the devotee she has to lie to the boss and uh, sometimes family gets sick, she has to make life. So what to do in this situation? Yes, well, for the service of Krishna, you can do these things. Hmm? For the service of Krishna, that is not wrong. But if you just tell lies just for our own sense gratification, then it is not good. We don't want to make a habit of telling lies. Mm. 
it is, it is said the earth can tolerate any burden other than that of a person who is a liar. The earth will tolerate burden, any burden on this planet except that of a person who is not honest. And truthfulness is one of the pillars of religiosity. The bull stands on four legs, and the four legs are the pillars of religion. Satyam socham daya tapa. Satyam truthfulness. Socham cleanliness. Daya mercy. Tapa austerity. So truthfulness is to understand everything belongs to Krishna. Everything is meant for Krishna's service. So if you're telling somebody I have to go to, you know, if you if you were to tell them I'm going to serve Krishna, they wouldn't let you go. So for, so for, the, for the service of Krishna, sometimes we have to we have to do these kind of things. Any other question? Yes, so Purnapratna. We can understand Sukracharya's position from the name. Shukra, Sukra means Siman. It means his position as the guru is based on his birth. So there are some spiritual masters like that. They're, they're considered guru simply by their birth. Just like people claim to be brahmanas simply by their birth. So similarly, Shukra Acharya, he was a he was Acharya because of his birth. And he took that position. So he's simply giving material instructions how to benefit people materially. As I said, he was concerned also about his own position. He didn't want to see his disciple lose all their wealth. So he was not really interested in the spiritual welfare of his disciple Bali Maharaj. He was more interested in his material benefit. So that is a materialistic guru. It's not really a spiritual teacher. So you get acharyas like that. They will simply instruct you in material life. And they don't give you the spiritual knowledge. 
but they may help you materially. You know, I said he Sukracharya brought Bali Maharaj back from death. He had died. He brought him back to life. So he was very powerful, but material power, not spiritual power. And when the Lord came, he knew this, this could be the Lord, he's the Lord, don't give him any charity. If he was a real guru, he would immediately tell, give everything. But he said, don't give him. So that's the material guru. And so that kind of guru will not help you advance spiritually. But some people don't want spiritual, they want the material. They're called demons. Not, not devotees. Not, they're not devotees. Right? There's two kinds of people. There's a divine nature and a demoniac nature. So you have to distinguish. You get gurus like that. They attract sick people. Someone's sick, they can go to the guru. Guru will cure their disease. But in time you get some other disease. They're not going to save you from old age, they won't save you from death. They also have to die. So we have to understand the nature of the soul. And the real guru will teach you about the soul and the, the relationship of the soul with the supreme soul. That there is one supreme lord and we are all his servants. But the, the demonic people, they're asking, make me God. Make me powerful. Give me power, give me wealth. This is the demonic nature. Okay, so we have to stop here now. Thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada, ki jai! Shri Bhamana Dwadasi ki jai! We have, we have some prasadam here to distribute for everyone.